Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. February 20th, 2022, welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, and you're listening to our 18th segment, where we appreciate you joining us every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, giving us your comments and your thoughts about Robert Sylvester Kelly. And here on R. Kelly Appeal TV, we're going to be discussing the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly. We're going to share updates on where the appeal process is going and give you some Kelly supporter viewpoints of the week. Today, we're going to be giving a shout out to all those who are still behind the king of R&B. We're going to discuss ways that appeals attorney Jennifer Bonjean can show Robert's civil rights were alienated and taken from him before, during, and after the pandemic trial process. And we're also going to look at the mental health status of Robert Sylvester Kelly while he was going through his federal trial. So let's get it. R. Kelly Appeal TV gives a shout out to those who are doing their part in sharing R. Kelly information with the world. Um, you know, after the federal trial, it has been very hard for Mr. Kelly, I can imagine. Um, we have issues regarding his health, his well-being, and his emotional state. Now, this information is needed to keep his energy alive out here with us. Some share his music, and it's great. I love to go on Facebook pages and see um, how people are celebrating R. Kelly. And, you know, his music is still moving. Some inform us through the reading of federal trial transcripts, and these readings take hours. And some have even gotten very um, creative, and they've put the information in like the form of being in a courtroom, I, I guess like a skit or a play. Um, and this is great. So please continue to do all that your creative thoughts and expressions can allow you to do regarding helping others to keep Robert Sylvester Kelly's um, lifestyle alive in the music industry. And this also provides others a chance to review the information that was unavailable to the public and be able to decide for themselves based on testimonial witness that was heard firsthand through the original court docket. I thought about what I could do to add more information weekly to the podcast when there is nothing to report on the appeal. I then decided to keep the legacy of Robert Sylvester Kelly alive by researching information that could have very well hurt the case of R. Kelly from the onset. Information such as the January 28, 2020 article by Courthouse News Service, Lisa Klein reported, the Illinois judge allowed attorneys to exit R. Kelly's civil case, giving Kelly only 21 days to find another attorney. Attorneys served him papers and Kelly failed to respond to the complaint because he couldn't read. These are definite acts of injustice because there are safeguards against such behavior when a person's freedom is at stake. What Mr. Kelly endured is strict injustice. It was a discriminatory act on behalf of the government. According to the ACLU Prison Project, the U.S. Supreme Court held in Goodman v. Georgia that the courts must analyze the American with Disabilities Act and Rehabilitation Act in the same manner. So if the American with Disability Act applies, it should be interpreted to give disabled people at least as many rights as the earlier Rehabilitation Act. Disabled prisoners may use the cases about the Rehabilitation Act to interpret the ADA standards. He was impaired to help himself in his own federal trial. So the attorneys who later exited the civil case of Robert should have made sure that he was under the Disabilities Act prior to jumping ship. This action was done on or around June 7th, 2021. All three of Kelly's attorneys at that time, Zaid Abdallah, Shady Yassin, and Raid Shalabi suggested he plead the fifth. Then they filed their motion to dismiss themselves as his lawyer to the case. Judge M.S. Johnson granted the motion immediately, leaving Kelly to find another to take on the case of a century. He only had 21 days to find another competent attorney. This is something that attorney Bonjean found to be a disgrace upon the system of justice. And I believe that she has a right to appeal that portion um, of the process, along with not being able to even connect with his attorney due to the strict um, laws of COVID at the detention center. So what do you feel about her using the Disabilities Act as an argument against his civil rights being violated to help overturn or seek a new court trial? Do you think it would be viable to do so? Now, when the appeal has nothing to report, I'm going to be discussing the legacy of R. Kelly. This research is going to help us to answer some questions that have gone unanswered for so long. Um, going back to this article brings up two important facts regarding why the case should be overturned. There should be a new trial period. 
with the loss of his attorneys that abandoned ship right before the sale. And two, the Disabilities and Rehabilitation Act was not granted to Mr. Kelly. An injustice of a fair and impartial jury trial among peers could have been the very reason why the case was lost on docket number 19-CR-286, United States versus Robert Sylvester Kelly. What are your thoughts about the article that we have reviewed today? Do you feel there needs to be a new trial due to the fact that he was unable to prepare his case with his attorney, any attorney. Do you believe that Bonjean has enough to steer the ship around and bring Kelly back home safely? Billboard.com came out with an article October 7th, 2021 in defending R. Kelly. How his legal team fell apart was due to the singer firing at least half of his legal team. The article also stated that Judge Donnelly asked Robert Sylvester Kelly if he was sure that he wanted to confirm his decision to let his half of his legal team go. He stated, yes, your honor. Greenberg then alleged that someone within Robert's legal team that was let go documented a mental illness situation. Hmm. <laughs> what do you feel? Was he at a point of paranoia based on everything that he had already occurred, um, had already endured? Um, wow. So traumatic stress can cause what is known as delusions, um, where you fight for your rights from within while others on the outside sees the action as irrational, unhinged, inconsistent with reality. What's your view on that? That's a, <laughs> wow. Once they were removed, once he fired them, the mental illness situation came to play. Mental health is another area that Bonjean can attack on behalf of her clients. According to Law and Crime, a Dan Abrams production, forensics psychiatrist reacts to the Gail King interview stating that he showed signs of borderline personality disorder. When you have two personalities, of course, you will fall into the trap of living sometimes more inside the fantasy world than the reality. And it's a bit easier to stay in that world than it is to come out into the harsh reality of one's real world. Um, that's what I researched. And I feel it's true with all the judgments, the misuse of the abuse of power, the lies that have been told against the R. Kelly, Robert Sylvester Kelly. That would be a very hard pill to swallow if you have dedicated 30 years to your life. It's kind of like you dedicated all your life to something. And then when it was all said and done, it wasn't worth anything. All the blood, sweat and tears. Hmm. Huh. Do you think Robert Sylvester Kelly was given the amount of counseling and mental health evaluations while going through this court process? What do you think? Could it be far-fetched that his rights were violated just as easily as catching COVID-19 and being subjected to unhealthy living conditions within inside of the detention center? This is just something I want everyone to think about. Finally, I have a Kelly Nation supporter who shared some important feelings regarding how she sees the entire situation. Angela C. writes, I'm not judging anyone, but me personally, I can't get with any of these females that she was talking about the women who were on the docuseries. I don't feel sorry for women who put themselves in situations. God gave us all senses and we know when something doesn't feel right. All the stories seem to be made up. You know, Angela, I wanna thank you for sharing your feelings with the channel. They are very valid. According to many Kelly Nation supporters, they feel the same way. Secondly, it seems that in today's world, we can't seem to tell the difference between the truth and a lie. One can say one thing and then sign an agreement and then get on a stand and perjure themselves in the midst of the, in the, midst of the testimony and not be objected. There'd be no objection. We can mix up dates, we can revamp stories, we can outright blatantly attack um, others. It's sad, it's very, very sad. We can say that a rape happened at one house and give an address of another house. Very sad, it's sad. Thirdly, the goal of our Kelly Appeal TV is to watch how this appeal goes down. This is where people like yourself is needed in order to keep the record straight regarding what has been said and what has been done. But in the end, justice must balance the fulcrum. So you are appreciated here at R. Kelly Appeal TV. Thank you for watching the podcast, sharing and commenting. This is our platform. I do want to end by saying that R. Kelly Appeal TV is a forum to discuss topics of his appeal, his rights as an American individual. We ask that we maintain respect within the comments and views on this channel and any and all good news are welcome on this channel. Those comments that do not fit the vision of the channel will be removed, however. There is so much more to discuss that will keep us updated in the and in the know of what is taking place in the criminal justice system regarding our brother, Robert Sylvester Kelly. And um, so I just wanna say too, um, I decided to work something else into the commentary of the show. I want to go back to a place and time in Robert Sylvester's life, and I wanna share something with you. So um, as he was growing, especially around 2004, he decided to do some changes in his career. 
And I did notice that. So does anyone happen to know what was going on in R. Kelly's life in 2004? Was he still producing music at top rate hits? Um, who was he signed on with? Was he trying to go independent? You know, back then I was in my own life style, doing my own thing. I think I was in college, finishing up my master's degree and moving into my PhD status. But I was unable to really focus on him. I would hear things on the radio very slightly, little by little, but I, I did not know what was happening because the pivotal point of his situation occurred around 2007, 2008. So basically I didn't do a lot of research on that because what I wanna to bring to you is an introduction of um, something that I feel is very important to focus on so that we can go back to see how this whole process hit him so deliberately in his face. Um, it's very amazing that he was so far behind in child support. It was very you know, amazing that he had no money. His net worth hit negative $2 million and all this stuff was going on at the very onset of a pandemic. How did he fall during the pandemic? What made that time so relevant? Um, that's something else I want you to think about. And I also want you to think about how we as Kelly Nation supporters can be a positive support in his life. I'm seeing people you know, saying all the positive things about him, how his music is still impactful in their lives today. And, you know, I read a letter online and it's about a gentleman who shared a location in the vicinity of Robert Sylvester Kelly while he's in the detention center. And he was talking about how stressed he looked, how um, older he looked, you know, unshaven, unkept. And, and that is just to break us down. That is to make us feel less confident because if all we have is our ego, then how are we going to be able to balance that when we look, our, look at ourselves in the mirror? You know, that mirror is going to tell us the truth. We're going to see the old age. We're going to see the change in, you know, complexion, texturity, and, you know, all of that, that artificial air and heat that's inside of those detention centers, um, the water that we use, you know, all of that is going to play a toll on our physical appearance. So I hope he is there taking care of himself. But the gift that I have for you when the appeal process is quiet, I will be introducing that to you next Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I thank you so much for joining, commenting, subscribing, and sharing this information because the more we share, the more we care, and the more people will keep R. Kelly on the mind. And it is very important that we lift him up, you know, because every one of us have made mistakes in our lives. And many of us didn't even know we were going down that path until we were there. So I want you all to consider that. And for those naysayers and for those, you know, um, you know, I used to do tarot readings and I used to call when uh, other signs were watching other um, videos of other people's signs. They were cross watchers, cross watchers. Here you don't have a place on the R. Kelly Appeal TV supporter um, page unless you're supporting. So there is no argument. There is no debate. There is no reason why this, that or whatever. You already come to the platform knowing that you support Robert Sylvester Kelly. And so I thank you so much for honoring that because, I mean, it doesn't stop what I do during the day. We keep it going, we keep it moving, we keep it believing, we keep believing that all things are gonna work in Robert Sylvester Kelly's favor. So I thank you so much and I will see you next time. And as always, stay 100. See you Sunday.